Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday thought, I was praying on something that I could talk about. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a Sabbath service this week. And I felt very impressed by the Lord to talk about Emma Smith. So I'm going to this week go back into my collection of videos, my series of videos talking about the different prophets and prophetesses of the Restoration and bearing my testimony of them. And this week, my testimony will be on Emma Smith, prophetess of the Restoration. I want you to know that I firmly believe that Emma Smith had priesthood keys and that she was, in fact, a prophetess. And I also want to tell you firmly that I also believe that because she is so key to the Latter-day Saint history, I also know and understand that it, like Joseph Smith, it's going to be really hard to dig into actual historical facts about her. So many people have twisted the things that she and Joseph and others have said to try to fit their narrative, to, to make their church seem more correct than all the others, that it's really hard to get a true historical picture of this woman. So what I'm going to be sharing with you today is my beliefs and my testimony of things from obviously my perspective. And I don't want you to think that I'm going to be able to go get you concrete evidence on everything I have to say. This is just my opinion. And I want you to follow the spirit of the Lord and take it as the Lord reveals it to you, if that makes sense. So I want to start off by telling you where I can, where I'm coming from with this. Um, I was praying, trying to figure out what to talk about for this Thursday thought, and a scripture passage from the Book of Remembrance, the most recent edition, came to my mind, and I'm going to share that with you right now. This is from Book of Remembrance, chapter 41, and I'm going to start in verse 20. Least thou misunderstand, I will show thee truth. Behold, my saints were not yet ready when my servant Joseph died. Yet I took him, both that he seal his testimony in blood, and because the world was not ready yet for all he had been shown. And as a testimony against my saints, when I took him, they scattered. Yet I had given them the keys to stay organized. James J. Strang, Sidney Rigdon, and Emma Smith as prophets and prophetess in the First Presidency. For did I not send an angel to ordain James J. Strang after Joseph had sent his letter of appointment and he was taken? And did I not send an angel unto my servant Sidney Rigdon to instruct him to be the guardian of the church? And was not my servant Emma ordained by the hand of her husband Joseph as a leader amongst women? And even as I said through my servant Joseph Smith Jr., all members of the First Presidency are accounted as equal in holding the keys of this last kingdom. Therefore, my will was made known, but in their pride, my saints warred with one another, for they were not yet ready. Now, I've already borne testimony of James Strang and Sidney Rigdon, so I, I don't need to get into that. But I do want to talk to you a little bit about this idea of Emma Smith being a member of the First Presidency. I was a little surprised when I received this revelation, but not shocked, because I had already been told by the Lord that had things continued, had Joseph Smith lived, had you know the, the war between the saints not broken out, uh, and the war between the saints and the various states, Missouri and Nauvoo, etc., that Emma eventually would have taken a pl her place in the First Presidency. They would have been co-presidents, Joseph and Emma, just like Christine and I are co-presidents of the Fellowship of Christ. Now, it's easy to say, well, Dave, that's what your church does, and so therefore it would make sense that you're going to make this up. And, and I agree 100%. Um, I can tell you that I received the idea from the Lord, and you can believe it or not. I'm just here to bear you my testimony. You've got to get your own witness of this stuff. I, I really can't convince you of anything. I'm just telling you that when I received this revelation, it made sense to me because I had already had the previous revelation. So I'm going to share some things with you here that, again, I can't prove, but that I believe. Emma Smith, we know, created the hymnal. I believe that that was part of her training, bringing things together and organizing things and taking charge of things in preparing her to eventually assume the role of president of the Nauvoo Relief Society. 
I am convinced that she and the other women of the Nauvoo Relief Society were ordained to the priesthood. And if you look at the historical notes, it's section nine, I believe, in Doctrines of the Saints. Joseph Smith point blank tells them that when you call people, they're priesthood offices. So it, it's, it's there in the writing. Later on in Joseph Smith's journal and in the Nauvoo Relief Society notes, we see that Joseph Smith taught them how to use the priesthood. Historically, we know that the sisters went out and blessed people by the laying out of hands. That takes the high priesthood. So I don't think it takes much of a limb to, to branch out onto to say that she was at least an elder in the high priesthood in the original Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Being the wife of the prophet, I would like to think that she was a high priestess, but I really don't know. If I said that, it would be an assumption. And if I received a revelation on it, I would have no historical context to base that on whatsoever. So I say, you take that to the Lord and see what you get. But at the end of the day, I'm not really sure it matters because she never became a member of the First Presidency. And so she never really needed those keys after the church ended in Nauvoo and everything split. Now, I have mentioned before in other videos, I'm going to talk a little bit about polygamy here, that she was not for polygamy. And I do know that they used very deceptive language. I'll, I'll say it that way. That's probably the nicest way I can say it. Polygamy is wrong. Uh, was it spiritual wife is wrong? But sealing is okay. And so Joseph wasn't a polygamist. He was merely sealed to several different women. So later on, you know, she joined the anti-polygamy saints. Of course, she was going to because she didn't like polygamy. She struggled with it. I know that she knew about and accepted at least temporarily four of Joseph's wives. That's what the, that's what historians tell us, and I don't see any reason to doubt them. But eventually, she kicked those women out of her house because she, again, did not like polygamy, spiritual wifery, whatever you want to call it. It's the sealing, sealing. Of, of people to multiple spouses. And keep in mind, in Joseph Smith's church, it wasn't like Brigham Young's church. It, it was women being sealed to multiple partners. And I will say that even though the evidence is circumstantial, I do firmly believe that section 132, when it talks about Emma, you know, whatever her, her sin was, I believe that her sin was, I believe there's a missing revelation. I believe that she asked to be sealed to another man. And... You know, because Joseph was sealed to other women, and I think that she was told yes. But when it came out that she was going to use that marriage to basically destroy the Latter day Saint movement and say, hey, look, polygamy is real. I'm sealed to that guy over there. I have two husbands. I think that's why it says in section 132 in the um, Brighamite, I should clarify here, in the Brighamite Doctrine and Covenants, it would be uh, 17a in Doctrines of the Saints. I think that that is why she uh, received the instructions that she did about not taking a second husband. I mean, obviously there were women that were taking second husbands, so that part couldn't be a sin. But the idea of trying to use that to destroy the church, that, that would be rather problematic. So she, of course, is going to join that branch of the faith. And, and by the way, just a quick side note, if you want me to talk more about that polygamy, I really don't have a problem doing it. The the her the idea of her marrying uh, a second husband, let me know in the comments and I will make another video um, on that topic. But I don't want to get into that here. I don't want this to become a, poly, a polygamy uh, video. But when Joseph Smith died, there was a lot of entanglement of debt. And Joseph Smith was, you know, he was about to declare bankruptcy. He was fleeing the, st fleeing the state so she was not left in the best circumstances. And so even though she was a leader among women, and she was a very strong woman, and she was a woman who, who had a deep connection and, and relationship with God, personal relationship with God, she knew that her son was to take over at some point. And, and I have no problem believing that at all. I, you know, whatever church, whatever branch of the kingdom that Joseph Smith III chose to join, I, I firmly believe that as long as no one murdered him, that he was destined to be 
prophet, seer, and revelator within the Latter-day Saint movement. I've borne testimony of him as well. So she went to the anti-polygamy church where her son eventually, very quickly, I should say, became prophet president. And she helped put together anti-polygamy missionary tracks you know, through an interview that the missionaries that went out west to try to convert the Brighamites to the RLDS church. All of that is interesting historically. But I believe what's important here from our standpoint isn't the polygamy stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting and there's things we can learn from it. Don't get me wrong. But it's interesting to me that Joseph Smith ordained blacks and women, definitely black men, I don't know about black women, and you know, women, and yet James Strang ordained women, right? Brigham Young did not. And I believe the reason why is because he didn't want to admit that Emma had keys, that Emma had any authority. The Smiths were a problem for his church because that messed up the narrative he was telling that he was the guy now. It was very easy to say, well, Joseph Smith III didn't follow them, didn't, didn't chose somebody else, so therefore he's an apostate. Sure, why not? Whatever. Um, but any Smiths involved in the Brighamite movement, and as we see, as we saw, Hiram's descendants ended up becoming leaders in that church and not Joseph Smith's. Everybody loves the Smiths. Joseph Smith founded the church, right? So, of course, that was going to happen. But Emma had these keys. Why didn't the RLDS church acknowledge women in the priesthood until, what was it, the 80s? That is a question that I have that I don't know that anybody can answer, but I find it problematic. Joseph Smith III sought revelation on blacks in the priesthood and was told to ordain them just like his father was, so that's great. But why didn't anybody ever wonder about the women? And for me, this is important because in organizing the Fellowship of Christ, I I'm a guy, I can't organize the sisterhood. And in seeing the sisterhood, the attempts to organize the sisterhood, the two problems we seem to run into quite a bit are, number one, women who feel that they are owed the priesthood. And to be fair, I've run into men with the same problem. They feel that oh, I'm owed the priesthood. No one's owed the priesthood. That's a, that's a ridiculous idea. You have to be called of God, whether you're male, female, or non-binary. And, and the second problem is that we run into women who, because of the churches they came from, all these excuses have been made as to why women shouldn't be ordained or why they aren't ordained. And so they don't feel like they're worthy, which is, again, a silly assumption because is anybody really worthy? It's not about, it is about worthiness, don't get me wrong, but it's about being called. And if you're called, then you should know that you're worthy or that the Lord is going to help you become worthy if you legitimately are not. So, I think it's important that we as Latter-day Saints understand that from the very beginning of this movement, women were ordained. From the very beginning of this movement, Emma Smith was put in a position to move forward as she grew in grace, line upon line, precept upon precept, in her understanding, wisdom, and knowledge, to become not only a leader of women, but the leader of the saints. I firmly believe that. And as we understand this, and as we can bear testimony to one another of this truth, I believe that it'll be harder and harder for Satan to tell women that they're not good enough, that they're not worthy, that they're not qualified, that they're just not supposed to have it, because that is not God's plan. That is not God's way. If it were, the Nauvoo Relief Society never would have been organized, and it especially would not have been organized with priesthood keys, which we know that it had. That is in the historical records. So today, I want to bear you my testimony that Emma Smith 
is a prophetess of the restoration. She had keys just like her husband did. She had power and authority just like her husband did. And yes, her husband swept in, swept in and unrighteously asserted his dominion over her by shutting down the Nauvoo Relief Society without a revelation. He did not have the power or authority to do that because it wasn't his organization. When it was organized, when the women voted, the men left. He had no right to come in and, and shut it down. And then when Brigham Young restored the Relief Society for his own church, he excluded the most important part that made it an organization within the Latter-day Saint movement, priesthood keys. And yeah, eventually the RLDS church did give the sisters keys to the priesthood, but they gave them the men's keys and the men's roles. And I'm not saying that's necessarily bad because there's a lot of overlap. But you can't just take women and say, okay, you're men now. That, that doesn't really work. It's not the way the Lord set it up in the original church. And so I don't know why he would do that later. I'm not saying that Community of Christ or the RLDS churches that, that ordain women are wrong to do so. They are following a revelation that they received and they're doing it the way that they understand it. I'm merely pointing out that it's not the way that the Lord originally had it set up through Joseph Smith. So if they're doing it right for their church, which I presume that they must be, that's great. But I don't want us to think that their way is the only way or that Joseph Smith set it up wrong by setting it up differently. And I'm not sure how it works in the Strangite or the uh, Campbellite or, or other churches. I just don't know enough information about them. So if you do, please share in the comments below. I'd, I'd love to hear about that. Um, but at the end of the day, again, I'm going to say this one last time. I'm going to reiterate it one more time. Women are worthy of the priesthood and have been since the very beginning. Adam and Eve. And so I think it's important that we have a testimony of Emma Smith as a prophetess, even if she wasn't a seer and revelator. Maybe she was. I, I genuinely do not know. But I know that she was a prophetess. I know that she had priesthood keys. And the sooner we recognize this as a people, the sooner we'll be able to move forward in the Lord ordaining everyone that's worthy and not just the males. And we'll be able to seek revelation through the sisters, not through me, not through some other man, but through the sisters to know how to restore that priesthood power, the priesthood duties, the priesthood responsibilities, because I, I don't know that everything has to be exactly the same. But I'll tell you this. If it is supposed to be exactly the same, I know that we'll learn that through a prophetess. When she goes to the Lord and comes back to us with revelation on how to do it correctly. It is not a man's place to assert dominance over a woman or a group of women and tell them how to run their organization. And I think that the most important thing that I learned reading over the first chapter in the Relief Society Notes, which again is Section 9 in Doctrines of the Saints, is seeing that the men left the room when the women were about their business. There was no man in there to ensure they were doing it right. The women were trusted to figure it out between them and God on their own. And so therefore, it is my testimony that that's the way we should be doing it today. So to wrap up this video, 
one last time, I want to bury my testimony that Emma Smith is a prophetess of this restoration. I want to bury my testimony that women can, should, and will, and do hold priesthood keys. I am excited to see prophetesses and sister apostles in action putting together the sisterhood of Christ in the way, in the manner that the Lord desires it to be. And I, I hope and pray that it can happen in my lifetime. So that's my Thursday thought. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.